Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video, I'm going to cover Emerisium production. Now, Emerisium is one of the best fuels for powering not only your RBMK reactors, but also for forming the highest tier of self-charging battery and to use as an RTG pellet. Now, this entire process will be covered in three steps as you can see from the number of RBMK reactors or from the amounts of silex that we have. From uranium, we are going to go into plutonium and from plutonium, we'll form Emerisium. So, yeah, without any further ado, let's get straight into the video. Step 1 is getting your hands on some uranium ore. Now, this ore can be nether uranium ore or normal uranium ore. You can mine this out from your vault or if you have mine factory reloaded mod, you can make this ore yourself using the laser drill and laser drill prechargers. The laser drill requires a clean line of sight to either void or bedrock and the laser drill prechargers requires power to work. Once all of the conditions are met, place the lime focus or the lime laser focus in order to get the maximum amount of uranium and nether uranium ore. All of the ore which is produced will be deposited in a crate or chest which is placed directly above the laser drill. So let's assume that we have produced some uranium ore. Once you have the ore in the crate, it will travel down for processing and our first stage of processing will be in the ore acidizer. So the ore acidizer will take the uranium ore and convert it into uranium crystal. You already know how the process works. Then the crystals will travel down the path and go into the centrifuge. Centrifuge will give us three components out of the uranium crystal. These are four pieces of uranium powder, radium-226 nuggets and also a tiny pile of lithium powder. The main object of interest here is going to be the uranium powder. So we are going to take all of this uranium powder into our very first silex. Now this silex by the way will require UV rays or UV radiation. So set the APL to UV radiation and start it. So once you do that, the silex will start processing all of the uranium powder and we will get two main components from this, uranium-238 and uranium-235 nuggets. Now you will notice that we get lot less uranium-235 compared to uranium-238. So we have a choice to make here. Now you can either make medium enriched uranium or MEU RBMK fuel rods, which is composed of uranium-235 and uranium-238, the thing that we got from the silex. Or you can craft plain uranium-235 or high enriched uranium-235 rods. Now the 235 rods are more efficient, but if you want more quantity, then MEU is the way to go. But for the sake of example here, I'm going to go with high enriched uranium-235 rods. It's time to deplete these rods. And this is the RBMK reactor that I'm using for it. So here's how it looks. Take a screenshot if you would like to. It is pretty simple to make. There are two fuel rods surrounded by four steam channels. Then we have total six control rods and also six neutron reflectors. When the control rods are cl completely closed, they simply act like absorbers. So yeah, pretty simple to make as I told you. Now the control rods here initiate or basically show you the initial condition. So when you're using the high enriched uranium-235 rods, you can pull out all of the control rods right from the beginning as the high enriched uranium rod is actually not very reactive. So as you can see here, our fuel rod is 40% depleted. The best way or basically to ensure that you get the max amounts of product from it, make sure that you deplete it over 80%. So while we wait for the rod to deplete 80%, there is one more thing. Once your rod has depleted 80%, if you take it out in your inventory, it will burn you. That's cause it is hot. So in order to recycle any of the fuel rods, take them out and place them into a spent fuel pool drum so that they can cool down rapidly. You can also leave them in the RBMK reactor, which is not running, but spent fuel pool drum is the better option to go. Once the fuel rod has cooled down, the temperature is below 50 and the depletion level is above 1%, then you can switch your, okay, you might be playing this in survival, but yeah, you can take this fuel rod and then you can place it in your 2x2 two two crafting grid. What that will do is give you the pellets in return. So here, instead of one rod, you get eight pellets in return and also an empty RBMK fuel rod. So right now you can see the condition of these pellets is brand new. But if we let the fuel rods deplete completely, then the pellets that you will get, as you can see here, will be fully depleted. This is what we need. So let the fuel rods deplete completely and then cool it down in order to obtain the pellets. Once you have the high enriched uranium-235 depleted pellets, place them in silex. This time we are going to require 
ultraviolet oh sorry infrared radiation so once the pellets are in you will get two main products from here long lived nuclear waste and short lived nuclear waste so we have tiny pile of long lived and short lived but the main interest here is the long lived nuclear waste so get as much waste as you can and then bring it to your crafting table once you combine all of the tiny pile of the long lived nuclear waste you will get the proper long lived nuclear waste for uranium 235 once again we process this in another silex and this time also with infrared radiation and once the process is done we are going to get the main component required for the next step which is going to be plutonium 239 so once you have gathered enough plutonium 239 that you can craft an rbmk rod we move on to the next step so the next step here will be to craft plutonium 239 billets and ultimately high enriched plutonium 239 fuel rod once again the process will be the same we have to deplete this fuel rod in an rbmk reactor so the initial condition for this one can be like you can have 100 percent control rods out for the mep side and two rods at 100 percent and one rod at 50 percent for the hep side so as you can see i have the central control rod pulled out at 50 percent but you can also pull it out by 25 percent in the beginning it's a good option or it's a good choice to babysit your reactors when you are dealing with linear fuel rods as they are pretty dangerous so until you find that sweet spot just keep an eye out for any temperature rises once you have cooled down or basically once you have completely depleted the high enriched plutonium rod and you have cooled it down you will end up with eight high enriched plutonium pellets we once again bring these 239 pellets and process them with infrared radiation and this time instead of getting long and short-lived nuclear waste there will be only one output which is going to be the short-lived nuclear waste so collect all of the tiny piles and once again bring them to your friendly crafting table Combine all of the short lived nuclear waste in order to get, oh sorry, the tiny piles in order to get the proper short lived nuclear waste. And this one can also be processed by infrared radiation. And finally, once the process is done, we will get plutonium 241, which we need to process or to proceed to the next step. So grab enough plutonium 241 to craft another fuel rod. The process will be crafting nuggets or oh sorry crafting billets from nuggets and then ultimately crafting the fuel rod finally the initial conditions will be three control rods on the mep side pulled out 100 percent and only one rod pulled out on the high enriched plutonium 241 side and this fuel rod is very very dangerous so yeah you can try pulling out another fuel rod by 25 percent but yeah do keep an eye out on temperatures as i told you before as the reactors won't take much time before they explode now once again you have completely depleted the fuel rods and you will obtain the pellets bring them to the final set of silex where we will require visible radiation so place the pellets in and this time like we did with plutonium we are only going to get a single output which is going to be the short-lived nuclear waste so we have tiny pile of short-lived nuclear waste for plutonium 241 combine it all in the crafting table to get proper short-lived nuclear waste and when we finally process this in the silex for the last time we will get a final output product which is americium 242 and americium 241 and as byproducts you will also get nuclear waste and probably technetium 99 but yeah our main outputs are going to be americium 241 and 242 which you can use to make fuel rods or basically self-charging batteries so i hope you guys found this video helpful if you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this let me know if you have any suggestions in the comment section down below peace out